Hey everybody and welcome back. Right now we're going to go over After Effects 2019's new Puppet Tools. Uh, there's a lot of new options and it's pretty cool. So we can take something like this that I did in Duik and then figure out how we can do the same effect with pins. I think we can do it. <laughs> All right, we're in After Effects. A few notes real quick is if you are on the latest version of After Effects 2019, you will see some of these changes. If you're not, you're not going to see the new pin tools. If you don't have the new Duik, it's not necessarily gonna work with 2019 since the new Duik, or not new, sorry, the update to Duik will only correspond to 2019 After Effects. All right, moving on. So anyways, um, we, we have this bear character from Fortnite pretty fun and we just have one of those trendy dances going on it was a very simple to rig up using do but i was wondering could we have the same effect or could we create the same effect using pins and so i have another one and if you're going to do this pins generally work best when the body parts are not necessarily all separate as you can see this is how i will rig Something in Duik is everything is pretty much separate and you create that in Illustrator. Maybe I'll make a video on that one day. Um, if you want to learn how to actually rig this up in Duik, go ahead and watch this video that you'll see posted here on Deadpool. And it's a quick one. Uh, it's sort of quick on how to, to actually rig that up. But utilizing pins is kind of a different story because you need the body to be complete. And so I just rigged this up very quickly. I have a body and a leg, and all I'm going to move is this leg, just for the sheer example. Now, when we're speaking of pins, again, it's best to have just one solid layer. You can technically have one body with legs and everything be one layer, but I just want to isolate the leg for this example. So you'll notice you have your pin tool, not pen, but pin, and you can start pinning away. But wait, there's more options. Now, if I click on position, I can put one here and down here just for fun. It's going to create a mesh. Now, the bigger the triangles, not to get all crazy detailed here, but the bigger the triangles, the more movement and flexibility will be allowed if you start to move these pins. So you can change this density manually with some starch pins. For instance, if I grab some starch pins, you can see the density will just change. Or you can go into the individual layer on your timeline. If I go back to a default mode and then click into my density of my mesh, you can change the options there. And you can see if I drag, it gets way more dense. Now this brings up another issue. You can see this web is expanded outside of my leg. So what I need to do is bring it down so it kind of wraps whoop, right, eh, that works. You want it as close as possible to the edges, that's just my preference, and that's just a, a good practice to have. Let's say this mesh is perfect, you don't want certain body parts to bend as fluidly as, let's say, over here on the hip, and maybe over here. What you can do is start to add selected pins to certain areas. Pretty fun. Now, to get the bend, there's two options here. You can use the Puppet Bend Pin Tool. Just add one right here for fun. And you have your radius, which you can drag in and out, and that's just gonna make the thickness of this go in and out. But for simplicity's sake, if I grab on this positional pin and move it, you can start to see some stuff is starting to happen. Now, unwanted bending here. You never want unwanting bending. I'm gonna click on this and delete. Now, one thing I like to do with legs, if I'm using the puppet tool, which I really don't, because I, I, I rather just use Duik, is I will put positional pins on the heel and the toe. Now, if I wanted to click and move this around, it's gonna keep this flat, and I can adjust this later on to make it bent, but it's gonna add more of a natural curvature to the leg. Now, if I wanted an even better method to get this to bend, 
I want to move this piece, but I can't move this bend pin because this is just, you know, your, your standard. But now I have an advanced option. So if I delete that pin and grab the advanced pin, drag that right there. Now I can actually click on this pin and move it so I can bend and move. Pretty cool. Now if I hold shift and click on the, my two positional pins and my bend pin, I can then drag up and create that same movement. Now you'll have to play with the animation a little bit because if you go too crazy, it's gonna get a little cartoony unless that's the effect you're going. I just made this character really quickly so it's not incredibly detailed, but you can see you can get the same desired effect. Now the thing that's nice about using puppet tools or puppet pins or whatever is you're not gonna get missing chunks like black space between body parts as you would if you were to start animating this. Well, you can just see it over here. You can see there's a clear break in this knee. You're not gonna get that if you're using pins. So it, it's up to you. Now animating, it's a lot trickier because there's a lot more going on than actually just rigging up some controllers. Let's just go back a few steps. So for instance, if I'm going to animate, chances are I'm going to animate all my pins or some and then go back and forth with keyframes and it can get quite messy. Now, if I click on my toe and I drag it up and I drag it down, let's just hypothetically say that's all I want this guy to do is tap his toe. Now you can go in to specifically on puppet 10, puppet pin 10 and start to keyframe the position or a little shortcut. Now, if I hold down command and click anywhere up, down, left, right, whatever, you can see a clock will appear and then my timeline is starting to run. I'm actually recording whatever movement I do in real time. So if I let go, you can see it added all these keyframes and it created that movement. Now that's good if you want to create some really quick wiggles, quick movements, quick things, but it gets a little bit tricky if you try to create that with all of your pins at the same time. Um, but I mean, just play with it. It's something you have to experiment with consistently to get, you know, your skills sharpened. If I click on my knee and my two positional pins down here, hold down command and start to drag up and down, and then let go. You can see after it. It's not, it's not as great as I would like it. And you can go back in here and adjust these keyframes and add some eases to it and or make it cleaner and faster or slower or whatever you want to do. But that is just one way to add quick animation to your pins. Now, if I wanted to go crazy and rig some stuff up, what I can do is grab all my pins and then Let's say you have it mapped out, you know what you're doing, it's beautiful. You can go into Duik, go under the setting of links and constraints under rigging, and go down to add bones. And what it will do is manually add bones to your selected pins. So you'll notice the icons, there's two pins for positional and this one is for your bend. You have bones. You can then rig it up and then you can add controllers just like you would any other rig. It's another option to play with, but again, I prefer to just stick with just rigging it up with separate body parts and having my own controllers. But that is just my preference. Let me know what you guys think on how you like to rig up your characters for animation. Awesome, thanks so much for watching this video. Uh, click like if you learned something, if you liked it, and then go ahead and click on that subscribe button and we will see you in the next video.